us to do in the incoming season of our lives, to bring us into a place where we understand the word of the living God. And I need you to understand today, again, let me give it to you in reference to those of you that are on Facebook Live, that you can enjoy the Word of God with us every week. And this week, again, we're in the book of Psalms, Psalms 119, verses 63 to 88. Psalms 119, verses 63 to 88, we will read it every day. And the New Testament is the book of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 27, where we learn that Jesus is the branch, and we are part of the branch of the living God, and he is the true vine, and we are a part that makes up for us to understand life and to move forward in the things of God. Today I want to refer to you again and bring you back into a place where we understand that this is a season for us to learn the word of the living God. And so today, each of you, I want you to go with me to the book of Acts where we were. Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, beginning in verse 21. This is the reading for today, and I want you to understand that this is now a time a word in due season. That's what we're going to deal with today. A word in due season. The book of Acts chapter 14 verses 21. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconia, and Antioch. Verse 22, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and saying we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Now I want to read that verse again because I need you to understand exactly what it's saying. Strengthening the souls of the disciples. How? Through the word of the living God. Exhorting them to continue in the faith. In other words, to hold on. Don't give up. Don't faint. Allow yourself to be restored by the power and the anointing of the word of God. And saying to them, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. So don't expect anything that the enemy is trying to do to stop you or to interrupt your flow. You are now moving through trials and tribulations to enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 23, so when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they believed. Verse 24, and after they had passed through Pancilia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia, and they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work in which they had completed. Now verse 27 and 28 is important. Now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them, and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And of course today you heard the, our lesson on the uh, Ethiopian eunuch who was a Gentile coming from Ethiopia finding Christ and being baptized and today we see the second lesson is bringing us now that God has opened the door to us. And so they stayed there a long time with the disciples. And I want you to understand something today. It is time for us to move forward with the word of the living God. To understand now that this is our source, our reference, and the key for us to move through this cruel and dark world. Now listen to me again from the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 12 through 13. For the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and the spirit, 
the completeness of the personal and of both joints and marrow, the deepest part of our nature, exposing okay. and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart, and not a creature exists that is concealed from the sight. But all things are open and exposed and revealed to the eyes of him with whom we have to give an account. And I want you to understand something today, that this word that we're talking about is found in the Holy Bible. From Genesis to the book of Revelation. You need to understand that God's word from the old to the new is active and living. And that it will do for you what no other book can do. I need you today to understand that there is a word in due season. And you must understand now that you're going to have to get back to the things of God rather than the things of man. So this is a time of renewal. Hear me today. I said this is a time of renewal in this season. And I want you to understand today that this season that we're in is not going to last a long time. Therefore, it's time for you to move forward in every aspect of your life, accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, believing that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life, believing that this is a season and time to move forward with God in your life, regardless of the things that you're suffering, regardless of the trials that you're going through. This is a season now to get back to the word of the living God. And so I need you to understand today that this is confirming to the word in the midst of conflict and confrontation. This is a time now for you to understand that no matter what others are saying, you have the book of life in your hands and as you read it you will understand that you will be nourished and encouraged to move forward in the things of God listen to what Paul said Paul said I press on toward the goal to win the supreme and heavenly prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward who will transform and fashion anew the body of our humiliation to conform to and be like the body of his glory and majesty by exerting the power which enables him even to subject everything to himself. I need you to understand now that we need to press forward. Yes, the world is in a turmoil. Yes, the world is in spiritual darkness, but you have the light, and that light is the word of God. Remember what the book says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so I, what I want you to do today is now to get this word in due season so that you can now be restored you can now be revived you can now come to the point where you understand all these things that you're going through are just for a season listen to me today in the midst of all that is going down in the world that is tearing apart the systems of man's straw governments like wars famines floods and storms it's good to know that there is a way out of this mess age of satanic darkness and witchcraft and that is through the power of the word of the living God in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and you need to know today that as you stand on that rock you may tremble on the rock but the rock is not going to tremble under you you must have a time of renewal to move forward and adjust yourself for what is to come that through it all the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord will deliver them out of them all so all you have to do now is cover yourself with the power and the anointing of the Word of God one of the duties of the apostles and preachers of righteousness is to confirm the word of God that already is in your heart and to bring it out to an outward world in power and demonstration so that you can survive in the times of conflict 
and trouble that is already upon the world. You and I both know now that when we look at what's happening today, you are not excited anymore because it has become old-fashioned for shootings. It's become old-fashioned for people dying. It's become old-fashioned for people to be sick. But all of these things are just a momentary affair to keep you down if you don't hold to the Word of God. And I need you to understand again, what is it that the preacher is supposed to do? According to Acts 14, 21 through 22, and when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconia and Antioch. What did they do? They confirmed the souls of the disciples and exhort them to continue in the faith. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So what am I sharing with you today? You're not going to get out of this world in a good fashion. But guess what? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And he's able to sustain and keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. So again, this is a time of renewal. Listen to me. Therefore, the principles of things in our lives regarding all of the hell we must suffer in this dark and cruel world is to know that the word of God, Jesus Christ, has come to set us free and to bring us into a place of victory and return us back into his father's house. I want you to understand today that it's time for preachers and teachers to go back to the word of God. It's time for people to understand that we don't have cliches. We don't have philosophy. We have the truth and the truth is in the word of the living God. And therefore we need to understand now that if you're going to return back to the father's house, you have to accept the father's remedy for that return. And that return would be his perfect lamb the son of the living God who came all the way down to 40 and two generations that he was born of a virgin brought into this world with the perfect blood of his father that was not tainted by mankind. So you and I could be set free when we believe that Jesus is the very son of the living God to bring us out of the penalty of sin and death. Hear me today. I need you to understand that the Bible said this, and this is found in the book of John. You know John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In other words, this is the triune God. God the Father, God the Word, and God the Holy Ghost. And he has come now to bring us back into a place where we can rejoice in the midst of all that we're going through. Listen to me today. The word of the Lord is very precious and the word of the Lord is very true. And the word of the Lord is there to bring us into a place where we can understand what God is saying to us in this terrible situation. Listen to me. The Bible said this, and I want you to understand this. In the beginning, in the beginning, before all time, was the word Christ, and the word was with God, and the word was God himself. And in verse 14 of John chapter 1, we find these very important words. And the word Christ became flesh, human incarnate, and tabernacle fixed his tent of flesh, lived a while among us, and we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as of the only begotten Son, received from the Father, full of grace, favor, loving kindness, and truth. And I want you to understand that when we fall on him, we fall in the safety net to understand that the devil and his demons can do nothing to you if you confirm yourself in the word of the living God. Listen to me, according to Isaiah 40 and 5, it states, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, 
And how can we know him if we don't study his word, if we don't right. use the manuscript that he has given us? And that manuscript is the word of the living God found in the Holy Bible with 66 books from Genesis to Malachi, from Matthew to Revelation. And what I want you to understand today is that no other book has the power to deliver you like the Holy Bible. And all you have to do now is to confirm it in your heart and allow it to transfer and transform your mind to renew you on a day-to-day -day basis that God wants you to go through whatever it is you're going through with the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So listen to me today. We are in a place now where Psalms 107 and verse 20 said he sent his word. He sent his word to heal and to deliver and to set them free from destruction. And so when you get into this word, when you get into this anointing, yokes will be destroyed and your life will be renewed. All you have to do now is set yourself in that place and bathe yourself in the word of the living God. Listen to what the centurion said that was in the word of God, found in Matthew. And I need you to understand, listen to this, Matthew chapter 8. Here is the centurion who came to ask Jesus to heal his servant. And listen, even as the centurion in Matthew 8 and 8 states, what does he state? The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. This man of another nation, not a Jew, not of Israel, but he was a Gentile, but he understood that Christ had the power to heal. Christ had the power to save. Christ had the power to deliver. And so he said to him, Lord, I believe you. I don't even need you to come in my house, but if you just speak the word, my servant will be healed. And the Bible said that when he got to the house, and the servants that was around him said, he's healed. He's now been made whole. And the man said, by what time did this happen? And they said, about this time it happened. He said, that's the same hour that the Lord spoke to me and said, go home. Your servant will be made whole. I want you to know that when he speaks to you through his word, when he speaks to you through your heart, you must hear in the ear, the Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God wants you to know that whatever you're going through, you're going to come out. Why? Because he's with you. And he's the shepherd that's guiding us. He's the shepherd that's leading us. And notice what the psalm said. He's leading us in the path of righteousness, not for your name's sake, but for his name's sake. And he's leading us in a place now where we understand that no matter what it is that is happening in this world, you are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so I want you to know now that I want to talk to real people today. People who understand that they can't do it on their own. You're not capable. You're not strong. You're not physically in depth to do that. You need to rely on the spirit of the living God to move you, to help you, and to bring you into a place where he leads you from good degree to good degree. Listen to me today. I need you to understand today that we are in a world that is now moving into a place of darkness. We're in a world that's leading now to a place of corruption. But in the midst of all of this, you can stand strong, knowing that you have the power and the Spirit of God to lead you out of darkness into a marvelous light. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 15 57 and 58 states. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 57 and 58. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory, making us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm, steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, always being superior, excelling, doing more than enough in the service of the Lord, knowing and being continually aware that your labor in the Lord is not futile 
uh, it is never wasted or is never in vain. So what you're doing in this work of ministry is going to pay off after a while. Listen to me very, very carefully. Listen to what Paul has given us. He said, I give thanks to God that we have the victory. We're not looking for the victory. We have the victory. And because we have the victory, we're going to be steadfast. We're going to be immovable. We're always abounding in the work of the Lord. We're not going to allow the enemy of our souls to move us any which way. Why? Because we're standing on the very word of the living God. And I need you to understand today that we need to heed what Revelations chapter 2, 4 through 5, confirming the word of God. It states to the church of Ephesus, this is the word. He says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works over, or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. Can I share with you today that most people in church today are there because of dressing up, but not because dressing in their heart. You need to understand today we need to return to the first work, and that is to make sure that our families, our friends, our loved ones are saved, that they understand that Jesus is the very answer for all of their needs. Can I share with you today that when you look at religion as a whole, there are 121 religions we know as a major impact on the world, but every founder of those religions are dead. I need you to understand the only one that is alive that has been verified and canonized by the word of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. And since he is alive, I'm going to stay on his side. Since he is alive, I'm going to be revived and renewed in the things of God. Since he is alive, I'm going to believe that he's able to carry us through. So today, I want you to catch the word of God and get a hold of yourself and let your faith walk you into a miracle by the mighty hand of God. Just like he used Samson in the book of Judges chapter 15 verse 16 and gave him the power with just the jawbone of an ass allowed him to slay 1,000 Philistines in one battle. He took a dead rod that belonged to Aaron, the high priest in Israel, and caused it to bud and flower overnight to reveal that he had chosen Aaron to be the leader of the high priest's office. What am I saying to you today? Allow the Spirit of God now to move you into a place where you stand assured that nothing and no one is able to move you from the hand of the living God. He's told us now to hold fast to stand fast, to stand on that solid rock. Again, you know the song that I love to quote, On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And regardless of what people are saying, today, in the theology field, in the philosophy field. They need to understand that this is not the word of God unless it is found in the book of God called the Holy Bible. So I need you to catch a hold of your faith now and allow the Spirit of God to move you into that place where regardless of what you're going through, you are able to say this too shall pass. Why? Because I am in the hand of the mighty God. This is your season. Your season has come. Your due season is here. Why? Because you are catching a hold of the word of the living God and you are allowing it to penetrate every vital part of your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet you are allowing him to bathe you with his word and this is found in John 15 and 3 when it says you are cleansed through the words which I have spoken unto you as we reach into that word as it reaches into us it washes us and renews us and cleanses us and stands us up as a firm foundation to a cruel, dark world. So today I want you to catch a hold of faith 
and see how God deals with a Syrian general by the name of Naaman who was a leopard. All God asked him to do through the prophet Elijah was to go dip himself seven times in the muddy Jordan. Can I share with you today that whenever God gives you instructions, that's exactly what he wants you to do. But the Syrian general said, uh-uh. He said, I don't want to go dip myself in the muddy Jordan when we have clean rivers in Syria. But his servant said to him, listen, you have leprosy. You have the disease. If you follow the rule of the the prophet, then you're going to be made whole. Can I share with you today that you need to follow after the things of God and stop questioning whether or not it's true? Learn to lean on him and he will lean on you. I don't know about you today, but it's time for us to go forth and allow the things of God to move forward in our lives. Don't listen to people who don't understand what's going on. They don't have have a part of the word of God. They're not concerned about the word of God. But I need you to understand that if you are concerned, you're going to have to hold on to the power and the anointing of God's word that will bring deliverance in your life. So today, I want you to catch a hold of your faith and resolve to build yourself up on your most holy faith and see the hands of God defeat every enemy that is around you. Listen to me. There is no power on earth that can destroy you when you are under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. No witch, right. no warlock, nobody can put a spell. Nobody can put things on you when God is for you. The Bible says if he's for you, he's more than the world against you. Yes. So if you hold to the hand of God, allow yourself now to go back into prayer. Allow yourself to go back into fasting. Allow yourself to go back into the reading of God's word on a day to day basis that you're going to put this word down inside of you and allow it to move into your most innermost being so you can stand and be confirmed in the things of God. Hear me today. I need you to know that this is a season now for you to be renewed. You don't have to go to a revival. The word of God will revive you if you get involved in the word of God. Listen to me very carefully. You now need to bathe yourself in the things of God, knowing that he's going to cleanse, wash, and renew you and strengthen you day by day. It's in the book, and that book is the word of God from the book of Genesis to the book of Malachi from the book of Matthew to the book of Revelation God has given us every word to improve and to bring us into a place where we understand that this is the way out of this mess listen to me very carefully today you need to understand that God has given us examples in his word like the boy Joseph who went through a whole bunch of understanding from his family that they thought he was a dreamer and nothing else. But guess what? This was the young man that God was going to use to save his family from a famine in the times to come. Listen to me today. Don't worry about what people think. Don't worry about what people say. You get involved in the word of God. You get involved in the things of God. You get involved in the praise of God. You get involved in the songs of God. And allow yourself to understand that this is going to propel you into a place where you are able to stand in the midst of all that others are going through. So I need you to know today that it is all about Jesus and not about you. It's all about what the Father has brought into our lives when he sent to us his only begotten son that if we believe on him according to the scriptures we shall be saved. And let me move to the scriptures so that you can understand from the book of Romans. Go with me to the book of Romans. After the book of Acts is the book of Romans. And I want you to go with me to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And here I want you to understand that Paul has given us the prescription for us to be saved, delivered, healed, and set free. 
from the book of Romans, and let me read to you from verse number 8. Verse number 8, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 8. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse number 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse number 11, for the scripture says, whosoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek, and for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. And that's what I'm trying to tell you today. You need to call on the name of Jesus, and he will bring you to a place where you can stand through every crisis. He will bring you to a place where you can stand through every situation. He will bring you to a place where you know for a sure fact that no weapon that is formed, according to Isaiah, shall prosper because you have something that the weapon does not have. That is the word of the living God. So let me continue to read to you again. For the Bible says, for whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then again, I want you to know why you are confirming the word of God. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. And I want you to go there with me to chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and I want you to hear what I'm saying to you today so that you can confirm and stand firm in the word of God. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning with verse number 10. I need you to do what God has asked us to do so that you can stand through the storms and through the rain. Listen to me. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Are you hearing me today? Listen to this. This is the word of God. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of weakness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, Lord have mercy, stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with you, which you will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one. And listen to me very carefully, the 17th verse, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, I need you to understand today that if you're going to make it in this life, you're going to have to obey the word of God. If you're going to make it in this life, you're going to have to stand on the promises of God. And listen to me very, very carefully. This is important for you to confirm in your life that you're going to be obedient to the things of God and you're going to live according to the word of God. Now, again, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. What are we doing today, Apostle? We're confirming the word of God in our lives to understand that if we have it, it's going to sustain us. If we have it, it's going to hold us. If we have it, it's going to encourage us to move forward in the things of God. So let's go to 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. Here Paul talks to the church of Thessalonica. He says, Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort you in the Lord that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. 
Well, now that brings up a question. Folk are saying in the church today, you can't tell me how to live. You can't tell me what to do. Well, I beg to differ with you according to the word of God. Paul is telling the church of Thessalonica that you need to abound more and more, just as you have received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. Verse number two, for you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. Verse number three, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. In other words, now let's get out of the flesh and get back into the realm of the spirit. Let's get out of doing the things that the world wants us to do and move back into the things that God has ordained for us to do. Can I share with you today that the church has almost lost its ability to move forward because the world is now in it? But I want you to know today that we need to cast the world out and get back to the things of God. Let's look at the verse number four. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 4 that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. No one should tell you that the dress is too short. No one should have to tell you that the pants are too tight. No one should have to tell you that drinking is out of order. No one should have to tell you that smoking is not a part of this business. You need to understand that the word of God wants you to live a clean and holy life. And so Paul is saying in verse 4 that each of you, each of you should already know how to possess your own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passions of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of or defraud his brother in any matter, because the Lord is the avenger of such, and we also forewarn you and testify, for God did not call us to uncleanliness, but to holiness, and holiness is not a dress style. Holiness is a lifestyle, something that you must do day by day, Monday through Sunday. Can I share with you today that you need to confirm the word of God in your life and allow it now to be brought into a place where you understand that with this book, you're going to make it through whatever the enemy has tried to place in your life. Let me read on here. It says for us, Verse number eight, therefore he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who also gave us the Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, but for yourselves you are taught that God to love one another. And this is the important part that we're moving on in life today, in the spiritual power of life, in the spiritual knowledge of life, that as we share and love with one another, we want them to know that they need to be saved, delivered, and set free by the power of the Spirit of God. And I want you to know today that it's important for you to get back to the things of God, get back to the word of God, get back to the knowledge of God and allow him now to move into your life and to set you into that place where you understand that this is the word of the living God to set you free and to bring you out of bondage and anxiety and to bring you to a place where you understand the word of God. That's why the Spirit of God gave us several weeks ago Psalms 119. And you know and I know that there's 176 verses in this one chapter. But I need you to understand that God gave it to us so that we can become clean in our hearts, renewed in our minds, and brought into a place where we understand we must confirm the word of the living God. So let me give this to you according to Psalms 119 and just verse 33. It says, Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. And that's what we're trying to do today on the 20th day of May, to tell you to go back to the things of God. Go back to the word of God. Listen, there are a lot of folk in the pulpit trying to teach you how to get a bigger house, a better car. Oh my God, more money. But I want you to know all of those things are going to pass away. And you need to know that the only thing that's going to be confirmed in you is your soul. And your soul must belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. So here in Psalms 119 verse 33, 
teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Verse 35 says, Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. So today, let me share with you that it's time for us to be confirmed in the things of God. To understand that whatever you're going through, you're going to make it when you have the word of God in your life and the word of God moving in your heart. I need you to understand today, be encouraged. You are good to make it through. Be encouraged. You are more than a conqueror. Be encouraged. You are standing on something that cannot fail, and that is the word of God. The Bible says before one jot or tilt fell, heaven and earth will pass away. And I'm looking outside the window today, and heaven is still in place, and the earth is still rotating on its axle. So listen to me very carefully. Let's get back to the things of God. Let's go back to the word of God. Let's move now to the place where we understand that he said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Depart from evil. Let's repent today. Let's repent today and get back to the things of God so that our life in the midst of all the trials and storms, you will understand that you're going to make it. Listen to me today. I'm just trying to confirm the word of God in your life to the point that you understand that no matter what you're going through, you're going to make it. Well, as I get ready to close today, I want to go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24. Hear me today as I confirm this in your life. I want you to understand that no matter what it is that you're going through, if you stand on the word of the living God, he's going to bring you through. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. I need you to hear me today. This is very important, so I'm going to read it again. Jesus is telling us, he says, Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine, what are these sayings? The total word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Though you hear the sayings of mine and do them, be a hearer and a doer. He says, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Now, why is that, apostle? This is the verse I want you to hear, verse 25. Why? And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on a rock. That alone ought to make you praise God. That alone ought to make you rejoice in the word of God. Because if you have built your house, that's your spiritual self, on the word of the living God. When the storms come, are you hearing me? When the floods come, when the rain come, when the wind blow, you're going to be able to stand through the storm. Folk going to say, I don't understand. Uh, I was looking for you to fall. But no, I'm not falling because I'm basing on the word of the living God. Therefore, verse 26 of Matthew chapter 7 says this, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And you know if you've ever been out to the ocean and you looked at sand, sand shifts. It's not solid. It don't stand. It's not there to be a permanent situation. So the Bible says, and the same rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew up on that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Can I share with you today as I get ready to close? I know the winds are blowing. I know the storms are coming. I know the floods are on the way. But if you are anchored in Jesus, you will not drift or fall away. So the Bible gives us two examples as I close today. The example of the wise man who built on the solid rock. 
That's the word of God. And the foolish men who built on the sand, the same elements came, the same elements, not something different, the same elements. The Bible said this, the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house. The same thing that happened to the wise men, but he stood because he founded his house on the word of God. But the foolish man today, you that are out there thinking that the club is going to help you, liquor is going to help you, drugs are going to help you. Oh, my God. You are in the wrong place today. You're not going to be able to stand because the same storms that are coming in our life is coming in yours. We're going to be able to stand because we're standing on the word of the living God. And so today I implore you, I ask you to change your mind and to change your heart. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Allow him to come into your life and to encourage and to build and mature you into the things of the living God. Well, someone said to me a long time ago, Apostle, what if none of this is true? What if this is not real? What if there is no Christ? I said, well, you haven't lost anything. Everything will be cool. But what if it is real? Then you have lost all because you've not accepted the plan that God the Father gave for God the Son. That is, whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And so today I want you to understand, don't fail to understand today that you need to confirm yourself on the things of God. You need to be able today to complete this word and allow yourself to understand that the storms are coming, the winds are coming, the floods are coming, there's going to be trials, there's going to be tribulations, but you will stand through all of these things because you are standing on the word of the living God. And so today I want you to know without a fact or without a doubt. This is the word of God and that we have the victory. There's an old song that they sang years ago. Uh, we have the victory in the name of Jesus. Satan will have to flee. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. He has given us the victory. So as we get ready to pray today, I want you to come back now to that place where you repent and tell the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. I want to move forward with the things of God. I'm sorry. I want to now replenish and be restored in the very fiber of my being because I understand now that the word of God is powerful, active, activating and moving into the very being of my life. And you now have brought me to a place to know that I cannot hide, but I must know that all things are open and naked to him who have to do with us. So today, here I am, Lord, have your way. And that brings me to the final scripture found in Psalms 139 to confirm this word of God in your life. Psalms 139, and I want you to hear me because it is important for you to realize that God knows who you are. God knows where you are. God knows what you need. And so this is what David said. He said, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my down sitting and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. Ah, and are acquainted with all of my ways. For there is not a word in my mouth or my tongue. For behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me about behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. And so I want you to understand today that if you are ready now to move forward, if you're ready now to move into that place where you stand affirm on the word of God, there is nothing, there is no one, there is no power in the earth 
that can stop you now from moving to that firm foundation. And that firm foundation is the solid rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. So as I get ready to pray today, I want you to be into that place now where you move to the solid foundation where you move to the solid rock and that rock is the Lord Jesus Christ there is no other way out but there is a way in and that is through the solid word of the living God father in the precious name of Jesus we stand today as your disciples asking in the precious name of Jesus even as you said in the book of Jeremiah at the potter's house, you're molding us, you're shaping us, bringing us into a place of maturity to grow even in the midst of our trials and our tribulations, to understand that you are with us, you are in us, and more than the world. So help us today to move forward and to get back into the solid foundation, which is the word of the living God. Teach us, oh my God, help us to understand and comprehend that this is the better way to move forward in this dark and evil world. So we ask, as David said, teach us, Lord, the precepts and examples. Help us to understand this solid word from Genesis to the book of Revelation, and we will live and proclaim the word of the living God. We give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So those of you that are on Facebook Live and those of you that are on the conference line, I just want to remind you that you must confirm the word of God daily in your life. And we've given you now a word that will last you for this week and the week to come. And again, I want to refer to you that we're reading this week alone, and I need you to understand that we're back in that book, Psalms 119, verses 63 through 88, and the book of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 27. Until I talk to you again or see you in a special service on Facebook Live, this is Apostle Ellie Anderson saying to you, go with God. Now, those of you that are on the conference line, 